welcome back. Today we're making two pocket fry bars. Let's do this. I've had several people ask me how I make my templates uh, for the big uh, wall art pieces that I make. And uh, I'm going to show you how I go from this colored image to this image where it's just black and white lines which is what you're after one to save uh, printer ink but also so you can get a better idea of the detail so the first thing I have to do is find the image in this case I already know the image that I'm looking for so I type that into Google and uh, go to images like you normally would and here I go to tools and I look for uh, the largest one so I go to size and then filter by large and as you can see here, this image is 900 uh, by 1366, which is a good size image. So we're going to pick that one as the one that we're going to be working with. Then I right click and I save the image to my desktop just so I can have the original. So we'll just rename that. With that saved, I open up Inkscape. Now with Inkscape open, go to File, Open, and I select the image we just saved. And open that up. Hit OK. And close that for some reason. So we select the image by clicking on it, and we're going to turn this into a vector. I'm new to, very new to Inkscape, so I kind of figured this out as I went along. Uh, we click here, which is live preview, and then uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. And then here, uh, what we're looking for is this area here. It's very dark, and want to lighten that up. So we go to brightness cutoff, and we turn that down. And you can see as I click it, it's clearing up this section, which is what we want. We don't want it too dark. You want to be able to see most of the. Uh, detail lines that are there so that looks about right so we click OK and now that's basically made the vector now and it's a black and white image um, close that okay, next uh, we click on the cover and we hit delete and that's going to leave us the vector the black and white image and if you hit the plus sign you can take a look at the lines are very smooth it has some good detail that, that came through but there's also some gaps like here and that gap is caused by the way the original drawing was there's a lot of lightning bolts that were um, as part part of the background and it ends up cutting that off now you could fill the lines in here in Inkscape but I'm just gonna to keep it simple I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, fill it in once I print it out just with a marker so if you hit the minus sign on your keyboard, that'll reduce the size of the image. So right now this canvas is, uh, we'll switch this to inches here. Also so we can see the size of the actual figure. Okay, so we need to change the size of this canvas right now. If we go to file and document properties, that's gonna open up this box. And at the moment, So we want to select US letter 8, 8.5 by 11. And as you can see, it shrank the canvas size there. And we choose 8.5 by 11 because that's what we're going to be printing out on. So that's what we want to save it in. And also, if we change this here, let's also change these, uh, the rulers here on the sides. So now we have the image. So let's click on the image to center it as best we can and you can make the image bigger or smaller now this is where it gets a little tricky uh, because when I print this it doesn't come out exactly as I would expect it to here if, let's say we go up to okay, so let's make this a little bit larger let's go let's make this 10 inches so I made a mistake so I'm kind of slipping this into the edit uh, when I resize the picture, this aspect ratio lock was not locked, 
Um, so when I increase the size to 10 inches, only the height can increase by 10 inches and not the width. So you want to make sure that's locked so that when you enter 10 inches here, or whatever dimension, it also increases the width the same as the height. So let me undo that so I can show you what happens when you don't do that. So this is unlocked and go 10 inches. It changes the height 10 inches, but it leaves the width alone. So you want to make sure that that lock is locked before you do any resizing of the image. That way it looks proportional all around. Just wanted to slip that in there. Thank you. Okay, so now the figure is 10 inches from the top here to the bottom and 6.6 .6 and change across. Now when I print this, I'm going to print it on multiple sheets of paper. Um, and this requires a little bit of a trial and error. Um, if I were to print this on, let's say, uh, nine sheets of paper, it's a by three grid, it'll, you would expect it to automatically make this three times larger. So the height would be 30 inches. But for some reason, whenever I print it, it, it doesn't quite work out that way. It's always smaller than it, what it should be. Uh, I haven't figured out why, so I kind of try to go bigger than I need it. Uh, in this case, just for the example, I'm going to do a 3x3 three three just to show you um, how it prints out. And this, I want to save it as a PNG file. So we go to Save As. And again, we just uh, select the PNG file. On one. Which PNG. And we're going to save it as work in process too. And it needs to be a PNG file because in order to print it onto multiple sheets of paper, you're going to have to go to uh, Microsoft Paint, which is another free uh, software. So let's save that. And we'll close this down for now. We're not going to save it because we don't need it. And we're going to go and open Paint. Okay, now with paint open, we go to file, open, and we're going to look for our flash working process to PNG file. And it's going to open up and it's going to show you the image. Now paint, you can go to the print, you can go to file, then print, and then page setup. And here, make sure it's selected, uh, make sure portrait is selected, because that's what the image is. We do centering horizontal and vertical and here you can select how many pages you want to print it on I'm going to select uh, three by three and this will basically divide up this image into nine separate sheets and print that out we hit OK for that and then we go to file print actually let me go back here we'll go to file print and just to make sure we did it correctly we'll do print preview and here you can see there's part of the back the face so there you are all nine pages that we'll be printing so that is correct close the preview we'll go back to file and print and we just hit print Once it comes off the printer, uh, go ahead and trim off the excess paper. And this is just so I can have a section where it overlaps on top of the other sheet of paper so I can tape it down. And it's basically just like putting a real simple puzzle together. Just trim the, the paper where it needs it and then just tape the two pieces together. Once I finish taping the front seams, I flip it over and make sure to tape up the back seams as well. And then this is what I mentioned earlier about filling in the gaps with a marker. Just take a marker and fill in any of the gaps that are left behind or add any detail that was lost when it printed out. And then I just use a, an X-Acto razor to cut out the template. The final template ended up being 24 inches from the top to the bottom. Even though I had originally scaled it to be uh, 10 inches from the top to the bottom so if we triple the size it should have been 30 inches from the top to the bottom. I'm not quite sure why that happens when I go to print uh, on multiple sheets of paper like that. Uh, maybe someone will be able to help me out in the comments down below. But uh, it gets me close enough. Like I said I'm not shooting for an exact size most of the time. Just something relative to the uh, size of the other figures that I've made in the past. I uh, would love to hear any tips or suggestions in the comments. If anyone has anything they can offer please feel free to 
leave them down below. Uh, with that said, I hope uh, you all find this helpful for anyone who wants to make a giant piece of superhero wall art. Uh, there's a bunch of other videos that I have where I've made several of these and I uh, plan to continue making them. I really enjoy this process and uh, the end result is always very satisfying. Thanks for watching.